I tried living in Vietnam for 60 days in three different cities and in this video I will tell you my honest opinion how it was and if I think it's worth it for you to travel there or even move there. I made digital nomad living in Southeast Asia, mainly in Bali for the last two years. But I'm always looking for new different places that are nice for long-term living. And I was super excited about Vietnam because I heard it's the most affordable country in Southeast Asia. And I did find a pretty perfect place, but there's a catch. But anyway, the first place I went was Ho Chi Minh City and it was not really my vibe. It's a big city very busy, people are not so friendly, it's just uh, not really my vibe, there's no beach also. But it was nice to experience, there's crazy walking street at night and also the shopping in Saigon is really nice, it's really affordable and there's so many options. But I was only a few days there because I was so excited for the next destination, Nha Trang. Nha Trang is a smaller city on the coast of Vietnam and it's actually really really beautiful. We got this amazing luxury accommodation next to the beach for only $20 per night, so it was really amazing, it's just incredible experience to stay in a this kind of place and still it doesn't break the bank and that was kind of what I was looking for in Vietnam to have a nice place to stay affordably in a beautiful place and also the food is really amazing in Nha Trang it's like one to three dollars per meal in a local place and the local Vietnamese food is really really amazing the banh mi and Vietnamese soups and noodles and everything the hot pots and everything it's so good and there was even this spa closer apartment that was pretty much the most beautiful spa i ever seen and the massage was also really really nice but the price was still really affordable such an amazing experience and one of the highlights of our Natrang trip and the locals in Natrang were so nice i think they're not so used to having foreigners there so much so everybody's super excited and happy to see us and the beach was definitely the highlight in Natrang it's just so beautiful it's so clean and well put together and also the views to the mountains and the city and everything is so unique and really really beautiful and the whole city is really like holiday vibes on the beach and also in the shopping centers and everything so it's it's really nice vibe and it was actually a really nice change to stay in this kind of city it was so comfortable and so nice i went to the gym in the apartment building like every day and just enjoying the ocean views and go to the beach and go to get some nice vietnamese food and this big supermarket with so many options so it's nice to cook in natrang also so it was pretty perfect place to focus on health and fitness and relaxing and also some work but the next destination in vietnam for the next 30 days i was even more excited and that is Da Nang. Da Nang is pretty similar to Nha Trang, it's a coastal city but more in the middle part of Vietnam instead of the south where Nha Trang is and Da Nang is bigger so it's more local and it's more like an actual city not just like a holiday city. And one of the nicest things in Da Nang is that the ocean water is so clear and so blue so it's really nice to swim there because in Nha Trang the water was not so clear. And in Da Nang you can even surf and bodyboard on the beach so that's why I was so excited to try living in Da Nang because at this point I already knew that Vietnam is so awesome with the food and being affordable and just nice vibe. So I really did enjoy having that lifestyle of going to the beach and surfing and also having the city life and having affordable. The food options are actually really awesome in Da Nang. There's also quite many western food so you're not only stuck with the Vietnamese food but the Vietnamese food is also amazing and really affordable again but also the western food was really good there's many nice options and also it's the most affordable western like a uh, trendy cafes I ever seen in my life so that's pretty awesome and guys do me a favor and like and subscribe it only takes few seconds but it helps more than you know and the locals in Danang are so friendly I was surprised how smiley and just friendly they all are but not so many of them speak English well so that's a little bit struggle sometimes to communicate but also there seems to be quite many digital nomads living in Danang and either way Western cafes there's always many people working on their laptops and also it's easy to meet the western people because there's not so many so when you meet someone you easily end up talking with them because you're kind of like what are you doing here <laughs> because there's not so many and one thing I really loved about Danang was that it was really active all the local people so active there's always something going on on the beach like a group fitness lessons or dancing or something and also of course people always surfing and doing bodyboarding so it's a really nice vibe to be around and the Wi-Fi was really good in Danang in some places it's a little bit unreliable but in most places it's really fast and works Works well. So I felt really good in Danang and I could imagine living there long term and I think I will go back every year for at least a month. And the cost of living in Danang also was pretty awesome like it's easy to find apartments there's so many options in Airbnb and I got it for like 300 to 500 dollars per month so it's really nice. And the place we stayed in Danang was not the most affordable but it's next to the beach basically and with the rooftop pool and spa so really nice value for money. And the food is really affordable you can spend like five dollars per day and still eat good or like up to ten dollars and eat like really 
really good every day. Always eating out in the Western restaurants and in the local restaurants and it's just really awesome. And scooter was not the most affordable in Danang but still okay price. And also grab car is really affordable like two dollars per trip inside the city if you don't want to rent a scooter. But it's also really nice to drive a scooter in Danang. The traffic is never stuck and the views are always really awesome. So yeah I would say that if you're on a budget five hundred dollars per month can be enough in Danang and with like one thousand dollars per month you can have amazing lifestyle and you don't need to worry about money too much and that's why Vietnam is so awesome. I didn't really have any negatives of living in Vietnam just little things like I was actually staying in March so it was really nice weather like 25 degrees during the day and generally the air quality was so good in Danang is so fresh air never dusty or smoky like I'm used to in the other countries in Southeast Asia. So it was really awesome after living so much in the tropical destination where it's just so, so hot and humid but also I heard that the, during the summer in Danang it can be also really really hot so just be aware of that. But the only real minus of Vietnam is that you can only have 30 days visa there's not really any options other than that so if you want to stay long term you basically every 30 days you need to take a trip somewhere else and then come back. And I actually met someone who was doing that living quite long in Danang and doing every month a trip so he can keep living in Danang and working online. So it is possible to stay there longer but it's not optimal with the visa situation. But yeah Danang is also a pretty awesome place to just travel for a little bit because there's many places to explore like Hoi An this traditional Vietnamese town and Bana Hills is really awesome place also and there's many other places to explore around Danang and it's also just really nice to experience Vietnamese food and that kind of city on the beach in Vietnam so it's also quite perfect for short-term travel and for full 30 days of using that visa it's really awesome so what do you think about Danang and feel free to ask any questions I will be answering to everybody and also I have many videos from Danang including a full travel guide so check those out if you want to go to Danang and learn more but anyway thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next week.